Hello, so we're back, and this time we have a nice laptop to repair, yeah? Apple MacBook Air. So what this is doing, I have a customer, he sent me a few MacBooks, but we are looking at the first one, yeah? Had water damage near USB ports, clean it, and it powers on, but wasn't charging. Battery ran out, and I have no charger for this. Uh, I think he meant uh, he doesn't have a charger for the battery. So the laptop is working on the battery, but not from the charger. Pressing the power button, nothing happened. Let's plug a charger and see what it's doing. So plug in the charger. The meter is coming on, you can see it. 5 volts. So the PD controller is not negotiating the voltage. 5 volts, around 260 milliamps. And the other port, the other port is not working at all. So I'll say let's uh, let's open this laptop and check inside. Okay, so that's the laptop inside. It just has small tiny motherboard. Huh? No, I cannot see liquid damage anywhere. Looks clean. But I'll say let's take the motherboard out and let's have a look on the other side of the board. Okay, so the board is out. Let's check what's going on there. Okay, indeed, we can see here liquid damage. Lot of liquid damage. Otherwise, the board is looking fine. I see a few fuses around here. This one is good. This one is good. This one. Is good. Oh, let's see. Let's plug a charger and see what it's doing. The charger is plugged in on the one which is getting uh, uh, the meter is getting enabled. So on the fuse we have five volts. Now, why this is taking 200 milliamps? So here we have 3.2, here we have 3.3. I mean, we should have the main power rail even um, with 5 volts. Here we have 12.2, check there, yeah? So the inverter, the booster, is working, it's creating the main power rail. Uh, which is fine, yeah? So this CD chip is fine, the one from the top. Now the one from the bottom, that's the issue. Here is the problem. Let me see if I have this uh, CD chip. Yeah, I found them, I found them, I found them. So uh, we do have the chip. Let me check if they are good. So this one, yeah, this one is good. I mean, we can see this one is good. Five volts, but still. And this one is good. So both CD chips are good. I will say let's uh, swap one. Let's see if that it will fix the problem. Yeah. But here is a lot of damage. Check on the board, board color and oxidation. Proper damage. Let's try it. A little bit of Rossi flux.
G position, yeah. Okay, so we remove the chip perfectly. Good, so the chip position, we know the chip position. Now, you know what I want to do? I want to remove the solder balls. I'm not confident uh, having solder balls here. Maybe, it depends if the chip has solder balls, but no, you know what, no, no, let's remove them. Let's take the solder balls out. Let's remove them. Perfect, right? Yeah, it looks perfect. I mean, nearly perfect. Yeah, now it's perfect. Good. Now let's remove the chip from the other board. From here. So we know the both chips are good. Which one? It's not really important. We can pick any. I just want to take the chip out straight so I can use that solder balls. Perfect. Check that. Huh? Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Check that. Check on the solder balls. So now we can move this chip. We can move it here. The chip position is the same. Yeah. So it has to be something like that, right? Perfect, let's use a little bit of flux. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry, the chip it will uh, go on his place on its own. You see, the chip is moving. Perfect, so the chip is soldered properly in place. Good. Good. You know what, I'm not happy with those pads, so check here. Yeah, check that pad and check this pad. Yeah, I'm not happy with this. But let's check first, let's see. 
and if not I'm gonna pull the board view and schematic and uh, we'll try to figure it out charging port good well let's see So plug in the charger, coming on, 5 volts, 19 volts, ah, ah. the other port, five volts, 19 volts, <laughs> uh, and the board is coming on, it's take 100 milliamps, 200, 500, 600, you see? So the board is coming on. Yeah. You know, that sucks. Uh, it's the same like uh, we made a video, but I forgot actually the Apple is the same like HP. If one CD chip is dead, the other one is not working, which is insane. Let's clean the board. Just, you know, to deliver a nice job. Just tell me it's not stupid. Probably it's made. I mean, for Apple, under I, I can't kind of understand for Apple. Okay, let's have the device fully working or not working at all. Because, let's say it's Apple. They have their own pride. But what excuse has have HP? You know what I mean? They have no excuse. So the board is clean. Let's put the board back. So have in mind, yeah, in the future, you must have the both CD chips working. I mean, you can have a faulty char charging port, fine. If, if only the charging port is faulty, it will work with the other one. But if one CD chip is faulty, uh, the other one, it will not work. Okay, so the laptop is coming on. I can see 1.8 amps on the, yeah. Yeah, we have a username there. Yeah, all working fine. Charging the battery fine, everything is okay. It's working great. This port is working, 1.6 amps, the other port. Let's wait. Because the current it all goes up. Now I'm pretty impressed actually this board is still working based on what damage is there. I mean everything is rusty on the other side. But yeah, it is what it is. Okay. So have in mind if you have uh, like any problem with, uh, you can, you can either buy like uh, boards for spares and you can take the CD chips out. This one I believe is like 10 pounds on eBay. But the newest uh, one, actually the newest one, like the MacBook Pros one, they are like 20, 25, so uh, can be can be quite expensive. Now, based on the technique, yeah, I always told you try start getting used swapping the chips without reboiling, yeah? Reboiling it's a pain, yeah. You are carrying uh you know a bag with bricks with you. Try to get used to replace the chip without the reboiling. I mean if you take the chip properly out, you take the chip with half half sized balls, yeah. So you can solder that chip anywhere. Even if you take it out without any ball, you can still solder it. It's a little bit more tricky, but you can still uh, solder that chip. You cannot yourself solder and uh, you can see the solder, but using the proper flux. No, this is not advertised, you know, it's fine. If you, know, you don't have to buy it, you can make it yourself. I made so many videos how you can make it. But anyway, you have the flux. Why this against high brands flux? Because rosin can stand up to high heat. 
The other flaxes, they get evaporated by rosin. It will stand up. Now, when you have rosin under the chip, you solder a chip or you pull out a chip, um, you have flux under. Yeah, you have flux under, then everything is fine. Yeah, no bridges, no, uh, you know, uh, solder balls which are not equal. Try to, you know, um, try to experiment a little bit. But I'm using 450 degrees, like even now, yeah? I'm using, why I'm using 450 degrees is because when I'm pulling the chip out, I want to be sure every solder ball is in melted. Uh, when I solder the chip, I want to be sure every solder ball is, is melted. So uh, that's why you need a flux which can stand up to high heat or can have like low evaporation, like Rossi. Okay, I'm going to stop now. I'm happy I helped this customer. Initially, uh, initially I said no to this uh, to need this job, but the customer come back to me and uh, he asked me if I can do it, if I can try one more time. Because you see, when you have like like this kind of damage, like you know, proper, uh, you see what is there. There is nothing to repair. The, 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 every component from there should be replaced. Every component from from the other side of the board is rusty. It's covered with some black layer of rust. So uh, sometimes we have to say no to this kind of job because you fix it, you give back, you give some warranty and the laptop come back and there's nothing to do. At some point you have to replace all those components. So it's tricky to start on a liquid damage job. For data recovery, yes. For data recovery, it's worth 100% because you get the data, you don't give warranty, it's fine. But otherwise, uh, it is tricky. So I'm going to stop now. I will say thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you like the video, like always. And uh, see you on the next one. Bye.